Hey guys, Ben Pollock here with myoplasmic.com and today I'm answering a question from one of our members regarding making adjustments to training programs. Like for example, the one that we just released on Myoplasmic called The Dark Side or a new flagship program, the Myo Myoplasmic Growth Protocol. If you guys have been following me, if you've used any of my programs before, you know I almost never recommend uh, altering them in any way. And my programs tend to be fairly low volume, I think, compared to a lot of stuff out there. And so a lot of people, I think, are a little uncomfortable with that. And I totally get it. Uh, I myself feel like unless I work my ass into the ground every training session, I really didn't do enough. That's not true. Um, but it's kind of a separate issue to wanna, what I want to focus on today. What I want to focus on today is how to deliver maximum effort over a minimum number of sets. It's a really interesting uh, you know, theory that I've come up with that I really think is responsible for both size and strength gains in the majority of successful lifters. Uh, I'm going to do a little, try a little new thing here where we're going to have a picture in picture so you guys can watch some training footage as I talk. Uh, please let me know in the comments below if you enjoy this. Okay, so let's get into it. Uh, when I first started training, I got into the very uh, low volume, high intensity uh, mindset pretty quickly. If you guys are familiar with Stuart McRobert, uh, the Iron Mind guys, uh, Cyberpump, those were the kinds of forums and information that I read when I was starting out. And they were really, really big on two things uh, no steroids and. Uh, maximum effort. You have to give maximum effort and you have to give maximum recovery if you want to benefit from your training. And kind of their flagship program, you know, uh, would be the 20 rep squat program. And the way the 21, 20 rep squat program was went was the cornerstone of your program of squats. You squatted three times a week, one set of 20 reps, and each time you add five pounds. And this set should be so hard that you think you're done by the time you get to rep 10. And then you keep going and you get 11 and you get 12 and you take as long as you need to between uh, reps once you get to like 15, 16, 17, but you don't re-rack the bar. You make that 20 reps no matter what. Uh, you know, you try to build it into a life or death situation in your head. I think this is a fucking terrible way to train. Absolutely terrible way to train. I think that it has almost no benefits in terms of both size and strength. And it leads to a lot of frustration because you're really trying your absolute hardest and getting nothing out of it. When I say nothing, though, I mean nothing tangible. I did benefit in one enormous way from following this absolutely ridiculous protocol, um, which was I learned to work really, really, really hard at one set. One set. And that was um, something that I've been able to apply throughout my career. And I want to talk a little bit more about why the 20 rep squat program doesn't work, but why the one set thing is really important. Uh, if you guys have read the uh, watched the Unfuck Your Program series, you know that periodization is very important to long-term strength gains once you're past the beginner stage. Okay, so over time you decrease training volume and increase training intensity. That means you're going to lower your reps, you're going to lower the total number of reps per session, increase the weight used on the bar. Well, the 20 rep squat program is saying, well, fuck that. We're going to keep the volume constant, and really, I guess 20 reps of working reps on squat is pretty high and you're just going to add five pounds three times a week, no matter what it's like, it doesn't work that way for anyone natural enhanced, unless you're a, like just setting foot in the gym and you've been in the gym like three months. It just doesn't work. It's, it's stupid. And I, I've wasted a solid two years trying to do that shit. Uh, so that's, that's why it doesn't work. I strongly recommend you watch the unfuck your program series for more information on that. If you don't understand why linear progression like that is not possible in the long run. However, delivering maximum effort in one set is possible over the long run. And that's something that is applied, not just in the 20 rep squat program, but also in a lot of high intensity programs like, uh, Dante Trudell's dog crap method. Uh, if you follow Jordan Peters, a lot of his are one set programs. Uh, a lot of these high intensity guys who lift a lot of weight believe in, in only performing one set. I think that recently powerlifting has gotten away from that and they've more moved towards more of a multiple rep, multiple set scheme using fairly low reps. That in my, to me, that works because you're getting more practice, right? You're doing a set of 20, you make it a 10, you feel like failure, you're going to keep pushing. Well, your technique's going to break down a little bit. As long as you're still performing the lift safely, that's okay. Um, 
in terms of muscle building, right? It's not okay in terms of powerlifting because then, and this is the crucial part, point, when you reach a certain percentage of your one rep max, depending on your training skill, right, how, how comfortable you are, how ingrained your technique is, when you reach a certain percentage of your one rep max, technique starts to fall apart. And in powerlifting, that's when you start to miss reps because you're dealing with such a low number of reps and such a high weight, right? So at, you know, if I was to perform a one rep max squat with 800 pounds, a teeny tiny variation in my technique could very easily lead to me missing the, the lift. Now, because I've been lifting for a long time and my form is very ingrained, that's probably not going to happen until I'm, you know, around, let's say, 770, 780, like very high percentages of my one rep max. But when you're a beginner, it's going to come into effect much earlier, right? It might be as low as 80% of your one rep max. We had a guy on myoplasmic earlier who, you know, he said he was he was really struggling with the program because he could perform sets of 10 with 90% of his one rep max. And that that means that you haven't really learned to keep your technique at those higher percentages. And that's why, you know, the rep calculators might not be accurate for one, right? Have you ever had that experience where you, you use a rep calculator and it says, oh man, I should be deadlifting 700 and I'm struggling with 620. Well, in part, that's because your technique isn't ingrained enough to transfer a set of 10 or 20 or eight or six or whatever to a set of one and learning to work hard at that set of one is is very very important if you want to be a successful powerlifter learning to work very very hard at one set of eight is very important if you want to be a successful bodybuilder that's a little bit easier in my experience it's it's a fuck of a lot easier if i'm being honest it's not even a comparison but the the principle still remains and i think instead of having that mindset of let me give maximum effort to this one set whether it's one rep two reps, eight reps, 10 reps, whatever. Instead of that, people have seen these laundry list programs where you're doing, you know, three or four or five sets of 10 or 12 reps for like a dozen different exercises. And it's like, no shit, you can't give all your effort to one exercise or one set. You still got 50 other sets to do. How are you supposed to do that? It just doesn't work. There's not that much energy. So that's why my programs are low volume, okay? Because I really try to encourage people to learn to devote more effort to less work. I think that's crucially important. Now, it's a skill that you have to learn, right? And so how do you learn this skill? Well, that's where the, we come back to the 20 rep squats, right? It's, it's easier when you're working in higher rep ranges, so, and again, this is one of the benefits of periodization. You learn to work really, really hard on two sets of 15 because a set of 15 on squats is hard no matter what. Well, then as you gradually decrease the volume, you can gradually teach yourself, okay, well, now I'm only doing 12 reps, but I'm going to make it just as hard as that 15. Right now, I'm only doing 10 reps, but I'm going to make it just as hard as that 12. And over time, a long period of time, we're talking years, over years, you can learn to give as much effort to a single repetition as you could to a set of 20 or even three sets of 20, something along those lines, okay? If you do not give your body a chance to adapt, right? So you have a program and it calls for doing nothing more than three sets of five on squat and three sets of five on bench. And you're like, mm, it's not enough. I'm going to add calf raises and barbell curls and dumbbell flies and X, Y, Z so that I can be tired having done all this amount of work. You're going back to that laundry list thinking right where okay well now i have all this other stuff so i don't have to knock my ass out on the squats and benches if you're a beginner right and you're getting frustrated because you haven't really learned okay well i have three sets of five on bench and i just i can't hold my technique that well and it doesn't seem like i'm getting better at pushing myself in one set from week to week what i suggest instead of adding other movements add more warm-ups Okay, so what you'll do, let's say you have three sets of five and your scheduled weight is 100 kilos, right? Just so we have round numbers and th that's your working weight. Well, you'll start with 60 kilos and you'll do a set to failure, right? Absolute failure, no matter how many reps that is. Not when your hands start shaking, not when it starts to feel heavy. Absolute fucking failure. And then you'll add 15 kilos and you go to 75 and you'll do the same thing and the same thing. And then, yeah, by the time you get up to 100 or by the time you get up to 100 kilos, you're going to be pretty fucking tired. And maybe you won't get all three sets of five. That's okay. You'll come back the next week. 
You'll repeat the workout and you'll keep doing that. Yes, you are adding volume in this method, right? But because your goal in your head should always be those end three sets of five, you just have to push yourself to failure in your warm ups. That way, you are able to learn to kind of focus your effort on those three sets of five. Uh, and over time, trust me on this, okay? Over time, it will start to apply where you won't have to go all out on the workout, on your warm ups. Maybe over time, you can go down to, okay, I'm gonna do a set of 20 with 60 kilos, and that's not failure, but I'm gonna stop at 20. And I'm going to just set a 12 with seven, 75 kilos. And that's not failure, but I'm going to stop at 12. And then by the time you get up to 100 kilos, you're like, okay, I'm going to go all out. And it's really difficult because you've burnt yourself out on those warm-ups to a degree. You've pre-exhausted yourself, but you can still make it happen. And then over slowly over time, you decrease those warm-ups, right? This is something that I actually learned from Doug Miller, who's a really good bodybuilder. Um, you know, he was telling me, I don't see why you would cut yourself short in a warm up when you can do more reps. Just keep doing more reps until you hit failure and do it again for the next set and the next set and the next set until you hit your target rep range. That's a very good way to kind of find a middle ground to learn to transfer from, okay, I have this laundry list of 50 sets to, okay, I'm going to go all out on these three sets. It's a very valuable skill. I think it's very important. I would. Uh, highly recommend that you not um, write this off. Uh, and I, I'm not saying that you guys do that, but I have a tendency to write some stuff off, you know, like time rest times in between sets. It's a great example. I just learned how much of a difference that can really make if you're keeping rest times to a strict 60 seconds versus it's been about 60 seconds. So this is one of those things where it sounds very subtle. It sounds almost, it sounds almost stupid to be honest. Um, but man, it has made a phenomenal difference in both my short-term satisfaction with my training and my long-term results. So I highly encourage you guys to give it a try. Take the programs at face value. Do not change them, but change your mindset and change your attitude towards them so you can get the most out of them. Hope you enjoyed this. I'm going to shut up so you guys can watch the rest of the training video. This is a training segment from phase two of the myoplasmic growth protocol that Justin and I did a couple months back. So have fun.